Hi, Terry Van Noy, and welcome to Math Powerline. We're going to be continuing on with trig identities, and we're going to be talking about um, why you use trigonom trigonometric identities and um, give you some examples. So we're going to start some problem sets here for you to try. I recommend grabbing a piece of paper and pausing the video after I present a problem to you. You give it a try first, and then I'll be happy to show you how to work through it. All right, first of all, we're going to talk about why. Well, what are the purposes for trig identities? There are basically three reasons why you'll have to become familiar with these, and I'll hope to give you some examples of these. Uh, one is to rewrite an expression and maybe simplify it in terms of other functions. Okay, you'll see an example of that in this video. One uh, another reason might be to solve equations and also to prove or verify other identities or formulas, okay? So I'll show you some examples of that. Now a quick reminder, as I showed in a previous video, um, the identities that we're gonna be using here are reciprocal identities where the six um, common trigonometric functions here can be written as reciprocals of each other. The tangent identities, which are the tangent and cotangent, basically the definition of what they are. And the Pythagorean identities. Now this one on the left is probably the most commonly used series of identities. You'll be seeing these sine and cosine functions squared and in different uh, arrangements. Also, um, these two versions of the same. All right, so we're gonna be coming back to this page a lot. All right, let's try a few examples. All right, we're going to show an example of how you can simplify these using an identity. All right, I got two problems for you here, and I'm going to go ahead and, and stop. You pause the video, and you try both of them. So in this first one, we have cotangent theta times secant theta. And we need to simplify that. And when I take a look at it, I notice that I got two different functions here. Let's go ahead and use some reciprocal identities and see what happens. In my reciprocal identities collection, I have this one and this one. So we're going to rewrite the secant and the cotangent functions. All right, the cotangent um, theta would be the 1 over tangent theta. And we're multiplying that by secant theta, which is 1 over cosine theta. All right. Um, make sure you have a, uh, these identities either written down or memorized. Now, that doesn't help me so far, does it? But tangent theta can be written as sine over cosine. Um, and taking it one step further, if I um, basically define cotangent as cosine over sine, that would be even better. So cosine over sine is the reciprocal of tangent. And I'm multiplying it by 1 over cosine theta. And you can see what happens here. So it actually becomes pretty simple. We're going to cross cancel those, which gives me 1 over sine theta. And you know I can simplify it even further. What's another name for 1 over sine theta? What's the reciprocal of a sine? Right, so it's going to be cosecant theta. So the idea of simplifying is to come up with the fewest trigonometric functions possible in its simplest form. So there you go. All right, hopefully you've tried this one. Now it looks like we have a sine squared theta, and it's 1 minus sine squared theta on the top, and cosecant squared theta minus 1 on the bottom. Now those look pretty familiar to me. Let's look at the Pythagorean identities. On the top of the fraction, I had this, 1 minus sine squared theta. Well, notice how we could substitute it by cosine squared theta, straight from this identity. And cosecant squared theta minus 1, I find here. Okay, uh, We can substitute cotangent squared theta for that. Now we're going to have cosine squared theta over cotangent squared theta. Now, is that the simplest form that we can use? No. Let's look at here. We have cosine squared theta on the top.
and cotangent squared theta is really the reciprocal of the tangent okay and so that's going to be uh, it's going to be a complex fraction and we're going to have um, cosine over sine but it's cosine squared theta over sine squared theta make sure you can read that So I'm going to write this and stretch it out a little bit as a compound fraction. So my numerator really is cosine squared theta over 1, and the denominator is the same as what I've already shown here. And I want to know how to get rid of that whole thing. How can I compress this fraction? Well, as a, a trick you've seen in algebra, I'm sure, is to multiply top and bottom by the reciprocal of that denominator. So the reciprocal of this denominator will be the sine over cosine. So sine squared theta make sure everything's all squared here over cosine squared theta do the same on the top and you'll notice what happens here these cosines cancel each other these sines cancel each other and on the top these cosine squareds cancel each other what does that leave me with sine squared theta so that's a pretty typical example of using a trig identity to take what looks fairly complicated and it becomes very simple in an answer form. Alright, thanks for watching and in the next video we'll look at some more identities.